just received a letter from Robert Clive. Looks like he had reached India in one piece. Thank God for that. Being his lawyer, my success is connected to his success. But I must tell you, being his lawyer is no easy endeavor. The man is shrine to danger and hasty decisions. But it is my responsibility to check that he doesn't do anything too silly at Madras in East India Company. This article doesn't paint a flattery picture of East India Company. It states that East India Company have taken all the advantage of economic and political loopholes to become quite the force of India. The East India Company was granted to create in import and export duties without paying by the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. Now, quite the concession, according to the inside account, lots of company executive took advantage of this situation. Now, when the Mughal Empire collapsed, the new Bengali leaders, the Nawabs, were very unhappy with East India Company as they were not following the rules but they were virtually powerless to do anything about it. Now, the apparently the East India Company have regard of local laws and rules and lawyers like me have to fix up their mess. Seems like someone at the door. Speaking about the devil, here's another letter from Robert. Dear Ernst, I have lots to tell you that the Nawabs of Bengal are causing the company a lot of trouble. It's outright extortion. We are not able to trade without paying huge revenues to Nawabs. They have not given a sanction to mint our own coins and we are not permitted to secure the company compounds. How can we protect our property without forts. Every one of them is a barrier to progress. First, Moshid Kuli Khan, then Alivadi Khan, and now Sirajud Dala. This whole family of Nawab is becoming a pain. The cost of trade is high enough without the added burden of taxes. The profits are paper thin. The company is growing so fast, we have no choice but to expand into more villages and towns. If it were up to me, I would replace all of them with British subsidies. Well, I think it's very ungentlemanly to go to another's country and expect them to go to their whims. I think all European are imperialists. For example, the Carnatic have two wars that were by French and British colonialists. Well, hello Robert, let's see what you have been up to. Dear Ernst, I hope you are still in good health. I am in Bengal now. We recently defeated Siraj ad which has secured our position in the area the East India Company's private army supported by the Queen's Navy performed splendidly against the 30,000 lo local soldier at what is being called the Battle of Plassey. Ernst, they forced our hands when they took our employ hostages and blocked our ships. We had no choice but to teach them a lesson. Clive make it seems like they had no choice in Plassey. But I have heard that they were trying to interfere in the internal politics of Bengal. And they stopped calling the weapons and refused to pay the tributes and taxes. So the Nawabs were justifiably enough and retaliated. Siraj ad marched with 30,000 to the factory at Kazim Bazaar. It took company employees hostage, locked their warehouses, took away their weapons and blocked their ships. We tried to negotiate with him, but he wouldn't listen. 
he marched to Kolkata. The outcomes inevitable. When one of the Siraj ad Dola on commanders betrayed him, Mir Jafar is his name, and he is the new Nawab. And more importantly, he is loyal supporter of the company. But as a servant of East India Company, it is my job to enrich the pockets of our shareholders. I will walk away from this adventure of very wealthy man. We loaded two hundred boats with all the contents of the Nawab's treasury, and just sailed them down the Hogli River to Calcutta. It was beautiful sight to see. I have come to understand that after the Battle of Plassey. In 1757, the East India Company has become the most powerful force in the region. Dear Ernst, forgive my silence. I have been rather occupied. I am not sure if you have heard, but I am now the Governor of Bengal. Another good news: we have won yet another battle. We have been playing musical chair with Nawabs, Mir Jafar. Turn court general, we installed the two power refused to give us the privileges we asked for, so we replaced him with his son-in-law Mir Qasim, and unfortunately Mir Qasim didn't work out for us either. He tried to kick us out, so we had to resort to force and defeat the combined armies of Bengal out. And the Mughals at Battle of Buxar in 1764. Even I was impressed with our forces. Me Qasim was out, and me and me Jafar was back. In, he had to pay five hundred thousand rupees every month. Unfortunately, Jafar died shortly after his reinstatement. There is now another Mughal emperor in place. Third times the charm, Shah Alam, is more aligned with our interest. He has granted us the Diwani of Bengal. This means we collect taxes from Bengal. Conducting business is so much easier. I estimate that we can collect enough revenue to trade, maintain our troops, and meet all the expenses of the company. We don't have to bring. In gold and silver to buy Indian goods anymore. The company is now self-sufficient. Well, I think something never change. All the swarmongering is not gone unnoticeable here in Britain. The police officers are doing the investigation into the East India Company. Robert Clive left India in 1757. He had approximately 37 million rupees. And he was, and the government becomes suspicious of his wealth, so they begin to investigate him. In seventeen seventy two, though he was found found guilty, so he killed himself in seventeen seventy two. I think it would be wrong to say all the officials of East India Company corrupt. Some of them came came from humble background and earn money enough to lead their comfortable life. The people who went back to Britain were very wealthy and lived lavish lives, but they were mocked by their countrymen. They wanted to be nabobs and became nabobs.